What's going on guys? Shooting Dave here. So good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, I'm a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles and I make photo and video editing tutorials. Now today, I'm going to show you how to get some dynamic shots of your car. Hopefully this video will give you some inspiration and some techniques that you can use yourselves to create some cool content. Now I'm going to list all the equipment that I use down in the description box so if you need any of it then you can pick some up yourself or if you don't want to pick some up you can tailor it to your own needs. If you're subscribed to this channel you would have seen about three weeks ago I picked up my very first car out here in America and well to be honest I am absolutely smitten with it. Naturally, I want to take as many photographs of it as I possibly can. And so I roped in the help of some friends and we headed off to the Angeles Crest Highway. Now the reason why I chose the Angeles Crest Highway is twofold. Number one is it's absolutely beautiful up there. Why wouldn't you want to go and take photographs up there? Second of all, it is nice and quiet, which means that we're not going to be disrupting the flow of traffic and we're not going to be putting anyone at risk. Oh, and just a safety reminder for any of you that are out there thinking of attempting this yourself, I did these shots well within the speed limit. In fact, we weren't even going the speed limit. All I did was slow down the shutter speed to make it look like we were going much faster than we actually were. First of all, let me show you the images that we created and then we'll go through on the how I did it. Now normally when I'm out taking photographs I normally use my trusted Canon 5D Mark III. However, on this occasion, I did not. I'm actually taking photographs with the camera that you're filming me through right now, the Canon M50. Yep, that's right, a camera that costs a little more than $500, and you could probably pick one up for second hand for much less. So why did I use the Canon M50? Well, the M50 has one thing that my 5D does not have, and that is Wi-Fi, meaning that I can connect my phone to the camera and I can control the camera over Wi-Fi and take photographs without even touching the camera. And that's a pretty cool feature and kind of key for what we're working with today. Pretty cool, right? If your camera already has this ability already built in, then you can skip forwards to this time frame as I'll be discussing the equipment. Now, as a Canon shooter, I have a bunch of EF glass already. I use it all on my 5D Mark III and, well, I adapted it onto the Canon M50. I did that with a Viltrox speed booster, which allows me to mount native glass from my 5D Mark III onto the EF mount. And it also widens up the aperture and the lens a little bit, mimicking the full frame. So they kind of look similar. Now, on the lenses, I use Hoya Pro one CPL filters, been using them for a bunch of years, can't recommend them enough. There's minimal light loss as they come through the lens and there's no vignetting so it's super good and I definitely recommend those if you want some link in the description. Now for the actual shooting, I was shooting on this obviously, so I was shooting at ISO 100, which is the lowest native ISO that I have. I was shooting at around a 30th of a second, so again, to make that motion blur look nice. And I was also using shutter priority, meaning that the aperture would be taken care of by the camera and it would adapt due to the lighting conditions that we were going through. And as a general rule of thumb, I like to keep the shutter speed about the same as the speed in which we're traveling on the road. See, I told you that I was doing the speed limit. Oh, and for the lenses, I was using a 24mm f2.8, a 35mm f2, a Canon 50mm f1.4, but I'll get into which one I thought worked best at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Okay, so that covers the camera system. How did I get those dynamic shots? Now this is the fun part, the equipment. Essentially there were just two pieces of equipment that I used to set up these dynamic shots. First of all was a 241 FB suction mount from Manfrotto and a 498 RC2 bullhead from Manfrotto. 
Now, I'm not sponsored in any way, shape or form by Manfrotto. I paid for all of this equipment with my own money, but Manfrotto, if you're watching, hook a boy up. Now, obviously you can use whatever ball head you want. That is just one that I had lying around inside my gear closet. However, the suction mount, I 100% recommend using one of those. It held on like a champ when I was using it. I mounted it onto the fenders of the Jeep, onto the rear window of the Jeep, front window of my car, rear window of my car, and I had no problems whatsoever. It was as tight when I took it off as the moment I put it on, and there was no shifting, no creeping, and I had total confidence when using it. So if there is one piece of equipment that you're looking to pick up, I would 100% recommend picking up one of those suction mounts. It is brilliant. Oh, and also using the Canon M50 on the suction mount meant that the payload was relatively light. Now, I haven't tested it with any heavier payloads. I haven't mounted my 5D Mark III onto the suction mount, but honestly, I would have total confidence in doing so. Okay, so that's the camera gear, equipment, and settings all taken care of. Is there anything else that we can learn? Is there anything that I learned whilst I was out shooting? Well, actually, yeah, there is a couple of things. First of all, we're on a single lane road, which meant that we could only get a dead front or a dead rear shot. And I would love to find a double lane road, meaning that we can get some more dynamic shots, so something like a front three quarter or a rear three quarter. I think that would be a great addition. So hopefully next time I go out and try this technique, I find a double lane road. Second of all, corners yield the best results. There is something more dynamic about going around a corner and photographing a car with a slower shutter speed. It just looks awesome. And so if you're trying this out, it works much better than shooting on a straight road. So find yourself some nice corners and get that foreground going get nice and close to the inside wall or flat trees or whatever just so it has more going on and more rushing past the lens it just makes it look much much more dynamic thirdly I would have liked to have been able to mount the lens a little bit lower on the car because shooting from way high up looks pretty cool but when you're nice and low to the ground it really exaggerates the amount of motion blur in the tarmac so that is one thing that I would definitely pay attention to next time I go out and shoot with this technique now I want to talk about the lenses that I used I used three Three different lenses. I used a 24, a 35 and a 50mm lens and initially I would have thought that the 24mm would yield the best results. You see it allows a lot of the environment into the frame which looks super cool and then you can frame up with your car. However the downside of that is the car is quite small in frame which means that you need to be much closer to have the car larger in frame which can be a little bit uncomfortable on winding roads. And as safety is my priority, I didn't really want people driving right up against my bumper through winding roads. So I switched over to the 35 mil. This improved things somewhat, but the real hero here was the 50 mil because it allows you for a much more relaxed driving style. You can have more distance between the cars and it's much safer. And when you're slightly further back, you still get all of that lovely environment coming in and the car still remains nice and big in front frame. So if you have a nifty 50 lying around, it's time to bust that bad boy out. So there you have it. Hopefully this video inspired some of you to go out and create some awesome dynamic shots of your own. Just remember to be safe out on the roads. Don't put anyone in danger and don't break the speed limit as well. You don't want cameras flying off and hitting another car or people swerving out of the way. Just be responsible. And that is all from me guys, thank you so much for watching, if you like this video give it a thumbs up, if you've got any comments or questions let me know down below, and if you haven't already please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram, I am at ShootingDave, and as always I'll see you in the next one, see ya! I can never cover the lens. <laughs> mm.